Hey guys, welcome into Fantasy Football Academy 2020. As always, I am the Dean, your host, and look, we're into week four. Uh, we're just wrapping it up tonight. We got two games because of the COVID uh, positive test with Cam Newton. So the Chiefs Pats game got pushed back to tonight. Uh, so we got a doubleheader going on Monday Night Football. A lot of you have your week wrapped up with tonight. So I know you're going to be wrapped up with tonight, but we're looking ahead because it's week four, guys. Anybody who's worth having is pretty much off your waiver wire. So you're rely, you're going to start relying on trades, and you're going to start relying on the waiver wire pickups that other people have dropped mistakenly. Uh, guys who they thought were going to be something, they panicked, they dropped them. Uh, it's what we call a tilt pan, a tilt drop, uh, where they get upset and they're like, "Forget this, I'm, I'm done with this guy," and they leave him, they leave him to the waiver wire. So, uh, speaking of trades, I myself uh, am giving myself the dunce of the week. Yes, I am uh, stepping down as dean for this week and putting on the dunce cap because I myself pulled off a Joe Mixon trade earlier in the week. Unfortunately, I was on the wrong end. Uh, I was on the right end and the wrong end on the same week. Uh, try to get too smart for myself. And this is what can happen when you overanalyze stats. I looked at Daryl Henderson. I looked at the matchup and I thought, hey, Mixon had been doing that good, but – Henderson's doing better. He's got a really good matchup this week. So let me take him. Unfortunately, I was playing the owner of the Henderson, of Daryl Henderson, and I traded Joe Mixon away. So just before his big breakout, I did look at the rest of the year for Joe Mixon, and it doesn't look pretty, but it's Joe Mixon. Uh, he's going to have these games where he blows up. Unfortunately, he blew up on me on the wrong week, and I was on the wrong side of it. So uh, I will take the dunce of the week for that trade. The stud of the week, the head of the class recipient, was last week's dunce of the week to see how quickly the tables have turned. We're going to get in here real quick, and we're going to look at Mr. Nick. Nick, you have received – the head of the class award. And we're going to show you right here. Uh, let's go to our game center. I myself am waiting on this on tonight's. We're going to show you real quick down here. I'm waiting on MVS who has a bye next week and Travis Kelsey to overperform uh, and beat out Tyreek Hill for tonight's matchup. So hopefully I will be coming out and just uh, just look really dumb for taking the uh, taking the mix and trade that early. I should have waited one week uh, before I went ahead and did it. But you know we'll see how that how that turns out in the long run. Um, our matchup of the week has actually been not that bad. We. Uh, it kind of went a little back and forth. Um, we are, once again, coming down to Monday night, uh, Rodgers and Mahomes. Uh, so we're going to see how that goes. And our matchup, the, the matchup that I was really watching closely was this one, Slutty Mutts and uh, Fighting Infidaves, Dusty and Charles. Dusty is done. So he will take an L. He will move to one and three on the year. Charles will move up to three and one and probably in second place. Because the undefeated team of the year right now has been Mr. Hunter. He has his kicker left. Um, now, this is not a foregone conclusion because, as you see, there are a lot of players left to play for one Alpha Chads Incorporated. Mr. Luke uh, possibly being able to knock off the undefeated Hunter with Cajun, uh, the Cajun Pudos or Pudos. 
not really sure how you say that, but he came up with an unpronounceable name for this Yankee. Um, we have CEH Julio. We have Todd Gurley and the Packers defense. So we will see how that all plays out going up against Mason Crosby. And if this is a loss by Hunter and it comes down to as small as he could have picked up a different um, a different tight end and probably should have started C.D. Lamb because he left 26 points on his bench. Um, I don't blame him from starting D-Hop. I really can't see him putting anyone else in after the week that Justin Jefferson had. You're definitely starting D-Hop. You're definitely starting Diggs. Um, however, C.D. Lamb just had one of those performances, and this is the beautiful wonder that is fantasy football. Uh, you're gonna take these L's. You're gonna you're gonna have these close calls. You're gonna get your blood pressure up, and uh, you're gonna look back and go, "Oh my lord, what happened?" But for our head of the class winner, 151 points on the week. Uh, we see he ha still has a defense left, and we still have uh, Aaron Jones. The other in a a Ron, and we also have uh, let's see who else do we have anyone else? Oh, and Calvin Ridley uh, for my boy. You know him, you love him. D Money with Danny's RBU. Uh, if this score holds, which it probably will, because I don't see seventy-five points. Uh, coming from either one, both of those players combined, that would just be an astronomical feat. Not say that it hasn't been done or that it couldn't be done, because this could turn into the Aaron Jones show. Uh, this could also turn into a Calvin Ridley show. We know how that can go. We know that both of these players are capable of putting up 40 points each. Uh, However, doing it in the same game is a really tall order. So, with that said, uh, if this holds holds true, then we're going to have Nick moving to two and two, Daniel moving down to two and two, and we will have a log jam in the rankings. Now, a lot of you, I'm gonna unshare. I'm gonna stop sharing this just real quick. Now, a lot of you are dealing uh, with uh, leagues who do have this log jam, who have a, you know, a bunch of two and two teams. Uh, you might have some one and three teams that are tied. You might have some three and one teams that are tied. You might even have somebody who's four and oh, that's top of the top of the list. But look, it's still early in the season. Okay. The bye weeks is what is going to make or break your season. Okay. Dealing with the loss of big players, not due to injury, not due to COVID, that you are going to have to look at and you're going to have to maneuver because you can't drop these guys. You know, it's not like the, the owner of Cam Newton had to drop Cam Newton because he popped positive for COVID. He had to put him on his bench. He had to start whoever else he had. In this case, in our league of record, it was Deshaun Watson. Uh, so Watson was started over Cam Newton, uh, and that was done pre-COVID -te pre test. So I don't know if y'all can hear it, but uh, my cat is uh, trying to make an appearance. Okay, so let's pull this back up here, and we're going to look at the players that are available. And this is my league of record. Um, we're, we'll also take a look real quick at uh, my other league, my listener league, and see who's available there as well. Now, these are all the players, and let's go with just week four stats. This isn't on the year. This is just performance for week four. So we see 
Teddy Teddy B had a had a really good week uh, against Arizona. Don't ask me what happened to the Arizona defense or what happened to the Arizona offense because this was a horrible week. If you're an Arizona owner, uh, Drake he got a chest injury toward the end of the game. That's going to be something that's going to need to be monitored throughout the week uh, in practice uh, injury reports when they come out. That's why it's important to look at your injury reports, guys. Um, if you're looking for a streaming quarterback this week, this coming week, I know that the Packers – the Packers do have a bye week this week. I'm trying to see if I can't pull up who else. Uh, but the Packers are going to have a bye week. Uh, also, the Lions have a bye week. So you're looking at Stafford's, it, uh, it's not, it will not be a streaming option this week. And Aaron Rodgers will have to be uh, benched and replaced for this week. Now, as so we see down here, Tim Patrick pops up. Um, now, Tim Patrick is a, for those of you who don't know, and I didn't know either until this week, uh, Tim Patrick is filling in for the injured Cortland Sutton and the rest of the Denver offense, uh, apparently. 113 yards on six receptions and a touchdown, 24.3 points, and seems to be the favorite target of Brett Rippon. You asked, who is Brett Rippon? Those of you who are Washington fans know his uncle very well, Mr. Mark Rippon, Super Bowl winner for the, the formerly named the Washington Redskins. Um, Rippins Raiders, Rippins Air Raiders, if you remember, was the name of the wide receiving core that, uh, that was with Rippin during that run. Back in the day, now his nephew, I saw this kid playing college. This kid is legit, okay? He can play. He has an arm, uh, you know, he's a good player. This might have been not really a maybe not a coming out party, but a wake up, uh, you know, uh, an introduction into the league, if you will. Uh, so, you know, they, they didn't do too bad given they were playing the Jets. So we'll see next week how things shake out in Denver. If you're looking for a streaming option, look at the matchup and see who they have, and that might be a streamable option for you for this coming week if you happen to be bit by the injury bug. Now, Justin uh, Justin Herbert, if you have a roster spot for this guy, definitely go look him up. You know he's already got some wide receiver options. He's got Keenan Allen, uh, Mike Williams, uh, as long as he's healthy. And then Austin Eckler went down in this game. Uh, we're not really sure what's going on. We were told it's a hamstring issue, but some, uh, again, something that we'll be keeping an eye on this week uh, and see how that all plays out. Uh, my wife's team had hit him, and she only got 12 yards out of him and 2.9 points. So not really what you were looking for from Austin Eckler. So, but if you're looking for streaming options at quarterback, um, Minshew's always out there. He had one off week. Uh, Teddy B is steadily becoming a really va uh, viable streaming option. Sam Darnold, please leave any Jet player alone. Derek Carr, um, 311 and two touchdowns against Buffalo. Now, look, this is a legit play right here, okay? So let's look at, real quick, any running backs that we're going to see. Uh, let's see. We see Malcolm Brown here. Keyshawn Vaughn making an appearance uh, in the game. Surprisingly, Antonio Gibson, he's, he's not here, but seeing the J.D. McKissick uh, – pop up here for Washington did remind me that Antonio Gibson and Terry McLaurin had a very 
good showing fantasy wise for Washington against a really good Dallas team. Or I'm sorry, Dallas, a really good Baltimore team. Um, I see Dallas right, uh, Tony Pollard right above it. Give me a little slip of the tongue. But um, against a really good Ravens defense, given they lost, they give up, defense gave up 31 points. Offense was only able to muster 17. But fantasy wise, McLaurin and Gibson did outperform expectations. So that's always uh, promising moving forward. Um, let's see. Go down a little bit. AP. Uh, I saw AP being used a lot. Uh, six rush, uh, 36 rushing yards. He did find the end zone. And if you saw the run they were where he found the end zone, that was a classic Adrian Peterson run right there. Uh, just ran the defender over. So, we, like I said, there's not a whole lot of options down here, guys. Uh, Naheem Hines still available, however, fading quickly with the Colts. Uh, not really sure what's going on there. I, I thought that earlier in the year he could take over the Austin Eckler role, but that does not seem to be in the cards. Uh, to my uh, pleasure, he did uh, Mo Alley Cox tight end for the Indianapolis Colts did make uh, an appearance in the end zone, 13 yards and, and a TD. So not too bad. Uh, now, not the 111 yard performance that I was expecting or hoping for. That's going to be kind of a ceiling for him. Now we see here on wide receiver, David Moore from uh, the Seahawks. I'm sitting here going, who's David Moore? Okay. Uh, he is actually the third receiver for the Seahawks behind, of course, Tyler Lockett and DJ Moore. Uh, Traquan Smith, if Michael, whenever Michael Thomas comes back, any Traquan Smith uh, possibility here will be squashed. He found the end zone twice on four catches for 54 yards, 21 points. But like I said, once Michael Thomas comes back, that production is going to fall, along with Alvin Kamara, okay? If you have Kamara, enjoy while it lasts, because once he comes back, that's it, okay? Uh, let's see. Tim Patrick already said, look for, the, look for the matchup with this, as always, environmental roster management, guys. Remember that phrase and use it when you're – setting up your lineups for week five, okay? Uh, tight end possibilities. Look, Dalton Schultz is still on the waiver wire. Um, we see O.J. Howard out. He left, I believe, with an ankle. Uh, it was either an ankle or a knee. Let's, uh, let's check this out real quick. Rupture, I'm sorry, ruptured Achilles. Uh, during the win against the Chargers. So he is gone. That leaves Cameron Bright and the Gronk. Gronk, uh, Gronkowski is now possibly, and I hate to say it, possibly a streaming option, uh, seeing how Brady is, is slinging the ball right now. Um, don't look for five touchdowns from uh, from Brady. That's not going to happen. They were playing the Chargers. Uh, Chargers aren't that good of a defense. Um, so um, Jason Witten did find the end zone once, so that put him up here. Uh, Greg Olson, five catches, 35 yards. And if you're in PPR, you know, that gives a little bit of value there, but nothing much. With the bye weeks coming up, keep an eye on uh, players like these. Uh, Dalton Schultz, Schultz uh, from Dallas, Austin Hooper from uh, Cleveland. Uh, these are guys who they're probably available in your league. And I'm not saying that they should be rostered. Uh, Dalton Schultz definitely should be rostered by someone. Um, 
he is being used quite frequently. You see four catches, 72 yards and a TD, 17 points is nothing to sneeze at from your tight end. That's a really good showing. You're usually looking at somewhere down where the Jason Witten, uh, Donald uh, Parham uh, from the Chargers is looking, and Greg Olson, you're looking at nine, eight points. So if they find the end zone, great. If not, then they were they were kind of a bust for you that week. But Austin Hooper, Dalton Schultz, Rob Gronkowski. Now you are playing roulette when you because they still have Cameron Brait. So Cameron Brait is still an option. Uh, Dan Arnold, he probably he just had, and Mo Ali Cox is still available in this league. Um, so you got eight point three points. Again, Mo Ali Cox probably should be rostered in your league, uh, at least as a option for bye weeks. If you're having a rough time with your uh, with your tight end, you can definitely get a good solid performance out of Mo, like Mo Ali Cox, out of Dalton Schultz. Uh, I love Mo Ali Cox on on my listener league, so he uh, he gives me a nice little boost. And I don't have to worry about rostering a uh, cowboy. Win-win. So let's go up here. And let's check out Game Center. And we will look forward. Let's look into week five. So week five, let's look at this roster. And as I said, Green Bay has a buy, so I'm going to have to take Mo Alica or uh, Mo Alica, uh, MVS. These three name players are giving me fits, guys. Um, and I'm going to have to take these guys, and I'm going to have to find a replacement for them. Let's look down on my bench. Uh, oh, we get Juju back against Philly, so that's definitely going to be changed out there. Uh, we have Washington against the Rams. So, with that said, I'll be moving uh, Kareem Hunt up, be moving uh, Daryl Henderson probably uh, down. Parker. Uh, let's see. I don't know, I'm gonna have to take a closer look at this because I've just got questions. So I got too many options, guys. Too many options. Um, Raheem Mostert were, let's see, he was listed as inactive. Um, with that, let's see what we can find out. Okay, so the hope for Mostert is to make it back for the Dolphins game week five. So if Mostert can make it back, then I will be having uh, Raheem Mostert up here. Um, I'm definitely keeping Robinson in. Um, Kareem Hunt has got to be in consideration, but it is against the Colts. So now he is going to be – could possibly be the lone back in Cleveland because we saw in Sunday's game that um, Nick Chubb got pulled out, did not return uh, due to knee injury. So he will see what's going on with Chubb. Uh, we see me going up against Dusty. So he's going to be losing uh, his kicker and a receiver. So Galladay and Prater are out. Um, and Drake will be questionable. This is where uh, having Chase Edmonds as a handcuff comes in well. And we see that his lineup is absolutely riddled with inactives and questionables. So that's going to be interesting to see how that all works out. And we see Lamar against Cincinnati. 
and we saw Cincinnati's defense give up quite a bit of points last week. So, um, something to look at. And let's go ahead and try to call this week's, this coming week's, week five's uh, matchup of the week. As it stands right now, I think I'll go ahead and take the matchup of the week from myself and Dustin. So, Dustin, until further notice, it's you and me, brother. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Let's take a look real quick at the free agents available in my listener league. <laughs> And we see me absolutely getting demolished this week in my listener league. So, these are all available players. Let's go to quarterbacks. And let's go week four. Actually, I tell you what, for this one, we'll go on the air. All right, so we see Justin Herbert topping the list. Carson Wentz on the bench as well. David Carr, Sam Darnold, Ryan Tannehill. Uh, we also see Tennessee coming up. Or no, they I'm sorry, they had a bye this week. Um, Kirk Cousins, Trubisky, Haskins, Rivers. So some va some viable streaming options here. Trubisky depending, uh, is not going to be one of the options because Nick Foles has taken over in Chicago. Um, David Carr, I'm sorry, De Derek Carr uh, with Vegas could also be a good streaming option if you're in a pinch. Herbert, however, like I said, should be rostered and looked at. He looks really good in – his performances so far. Let's look at running back. Uh, Giovanni Bernard, Madison, Thompson, McKissick. Now, Gore, some people might want to try to plug him in because of volume, but rumor has it that Le'Veon Bell is due back week five so we'll keep an eye on that and see how that goes. Um, Jalen Richard, uh, running back from the Raiders, is up there as well. However, he's got to fight Josh Jacobs. Uh, and a lot of these guys are just going to be backups. We see Giovanni Bernard. He's going to be fighting Joe Mixon. Madison, of course, is behind Dalvin Cook. So these are not going to be guys that you're going to be able to start with any kind of confidence. These are going to be straight flex plays if you need the help. Uh, let's see, wide receiver might have a little better options. We see Alan Lazard. Uh, he is currently on IR, so unfortunately, that doesn't work. Um, Tim Patrick is probably going to be the waiver wire darling of the week. Um, we also see Cedric Wilson. Cedric Wilson is not going to be up there because you, Dak is not going to be throwing for 500 yards every single time, okay? So. Let's get, cut this off. All right, guys. So here's what I want you guys to remember. And tomorrow we're going to have our starts, our sit starts of the week um, and waiver wire pickups. Guys, there is still hope. Even if you're sitting at 0 and 4, even if you're sitting at 1 and 3 after this week, okay, there's still hope. Anything that's happened in the past four weeks can reverse itself, okay? Just keep the faith, use, trust your gut, use environmental roster management, look at the matchups, play the odds, okay? The odds are they all will work out in the end. So if you guys have any questions about your roster this upcoming week for week five, leave down the bottom, subscribe, like, and share for me. And we will see you tomorrow on Fantasy Football Academy. 2020. Take care of yourself, guys. I've been the Dean, and this has been Fantasy Football Academy 2020.